Hi, I am Mandy of Mad Cow Mandy Designs. It is November 17th, 2022, and this is Stitch 40. Um, I have a few things I'd like to talk about real quick. Uh, normally they'd be at the end, but I don't want anybody to miss it. So first thing is I am taking next week off. Uh, I use Thursdays to send the pup to doggy daycare, and then I record, edit, and post all on Thursday. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving. I already have the day booked. I will be in a food coma that day. When I wake up from my food coma, I will go into full-blown panic mode for work on a sh for a show that I have that following Saturday. We'll talk about that at the end of the episode where it belongs. So I'm going to take Thursday off. Y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I will see you after some of the panic wears off the following week. Uh, second thing, I meant to share with you last week a comment, and I completely forgot to. So I have it pulled up so that I can get it correct. Um, two episodes ago, I, sh I was wearing my What's This sweater, and I was telling y'all all about the fit and the alterations that I made to it, or modifications that I made to it. Um, and somebody made a comment about sizing. It was, uh, Colleen said, sweater fit. I know part of your issue is gauge, very true, but I've read a few times now that you should pick a size that matches your bust at your armpits rather than the widest part. I think that only applies for round yoke and raglan style, but I'm not positive. Y'all. I read this comment and I hopped up and went and grabbed a measuring tape. So my bust is a 43. My armpits are a 39. That's a bit of a size difference. What's what size sweater did I just knit? A 38. I knit one inch smaller than my armpit sizing. Like armpits are not a bust, y'all. That 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 is a difference. Multiple inches of difference. I cannot believe that that's how that worked. Now, again, I don't know that that is how things are counted because I mean usually a lot of these patterns will come with a little chart of where you measure and what all the different sizes are. This is not what they're putting as a bust. They're putting the bust a little lower which would be correct. I don't know what to do with this information. I'm already confused enough when I'm trying to pick out sizes to knit things. Now I'm just going to be more confused. I'm going to be like, well, are they going by a true bust size or are they going by my armpit size? I am very glad that she shared that information with me because I thought I was going crazy. I thought maybe I was doing something just like horribly wrong to be constantly getting the wrong size. And it might just be terminology. I'm supposed to measure up my armpits. Eh. Okay. So, thank you, Colleen, for sharing that with all of us. Um, I don't know about y'all. I go through and I read the comments on my videos, but when I watch other podcasters, I don't read all the comments because some of those folks have hundreds of comments, and I wanted to make sure that y'all heard that particular one because that's a big difference. Okay, uh, last thing I want to talk about before we get into the knitting is thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for being here, hanging in there with me. If you are new, hello, welcome. I know that I've seen the numbers kind of ticking up a little lightly. Uh, thank you. Hello. Uh, things are about to get fun because the holiday season is coming. Market season is here. It's time. So things are going to get a little hectic, but it should be fun. 
And for all of my returning viewers, oh my god, huge, massive thank you to y'all for putting up with me over the last couple of months. Um, I had someone comment, Bernadette, she commented on my last video and said, you look happy. I am happy. I feel so much better. Uh, as y'all know, I have arthritis and I've been fighting with it, uh, for lack of a better word. And I, my medication wasn't working very well, so I started a new one and that really didn't work well. So I started yet another new one and it's working. I am feeling so much better. The fog has lifted from my brain. Oh my God. I'm happy. It, I, I'm glad that you can see it because I promise y'all, I hate editing these videos. It has been awful lately because when I go to edit, I can just see the dimness. I can see that it's not me. That's not the person that I normally am. And I would tell myself, you know, next video, you have to do better. Next video, you have to be peppier. You have to, you have to be more you. And I just couldn't. I would sit down and I'm like, okay, I can do this. And then it would still come out dim. And it was the fatigue um, when you're just constantly in pain and you're constantly having your body attack itself, you get tired. And it's like a permanent tired and you get this brain fog that takes over. And no matter how hard you try to have a reaction to something, you're just kind of a, a lump sitting there. So I, I am, I, I, I can see it. I feel better. I'm glad that y'all can see it. Uh, so th this is gonna be good. We're gonna get the party started. I'm gonna live and back up and we're gonna have a lot of fun now. <laughs> so that was kind of a like, three month journey there trying to get a medication that would work and the whole time just steadily downhill but I'm good and I'm ready to have some fun it perfect timing for all the holiday markets and you know Halloween was kind of rough but I made it through Halloween and now now we're good so that's enough pre rambling, uh, eight minutes. They, I got that out faster than I thought I would. <laughs> so let's get into finished objects. I have work, work and more work. Imagine that. <laughs> so first up, I showed you these last week, my little reindeer with his cute little tail. Ah! Okay. I finished the other three that I told y'all I was working on, which brings me up to a whopping four. That's not enough. Oh God. Y'all, I got stuff to tell you about market later. Um, so I have a total of four. I will be making more of them. Um, I don't know where my net nitpicks order went. Um, I, I placed two different orders and one went from Illinois to Texas. It just, it skipped me. And the other one is going DHL. So I get no updates. There's no tracking information. Like there's a tracking number, but it doesn't, it just says in route. When it gets here, I have a yarn called gingerbread that I'm going to try and make gingerbread men out of. And oh my God, they're just so cute. Mm, I can't help it. Um, so I need to make many, many more of these. I need a whole herd of reindeer. And I have nowhere to put y'all. To the floor. <laughs> okay, I have cranked more hats for work. Um, I went and purchased some kind of fun self coloring yarns. Um, here's the first one. 
it was called Jazz Stripes, I think. And I got cute little palms on them. So I have two of those. I can get two hats out of a skein. This was Tide Pool, I think. I kind of went with like a neutral and then a pink. Very not neutral. And, and, and. I could not help myself. It's called Christmas. It has sparkle in it, which I don't know if that really shows up on here, but it definitely shows up in person. A white palm and a red palm. Oh, the red palm is just perfect. Um, so I'm hoping that somebody out there is just, you know, oh my God, Christmas and wants to buy a Christmas hat. Uh, I have two more skeins that he, uh, I am going to crank up before the show and that'll give me a stack of hats. I have no idea if they will sell, how well they will, I don't know. Um, so I don't want to do too many of them. We'll find out. The last not the last, because I still didn't get the stitch markers. I'm gonna have to go get those. Next to last item that I wanna show y'all peaches. <laughs> um, I am counting these as finished objects for y'all because with any luck, they won't be here for me to show you next episode. Um, I live in a town that has a peach festival. We have peach orchards. Um, so yeah, peaches do well here. I make these and then I have a ribbon that I will loop off of it and they're specially printed with like town wording on them. And I sell them as Christmas ornaments. I mean, obviously, they don't have to go on a tree, but I have a little, maybe like a two foot tree, a foot and a half tall tree that I put on my table when I go to Christmas markets and I hang these on it so people can see how cute it would be on their Christmas tree. Um, I have 10 of them. Two of them <laughs> don't have their toppers yet. I've made the parts, I just, haven't attached them. So I have two more that I need to put the leaves and the stem on and then all the ribbons and they will be ready to go. I will... I'm going to try and find the pattern and link it down below for y'all. It was a free pattern that I found via Pinterest and I did modify it just a little bit because it was big. Um, I left out some of the de uh, some of the increases and maybe some of the height to it to make it more peach sized because it was coming out like an orange. The thing was huge. And from the first time I made these in 2019, I did make a small adjustment. I tacked the leaves down. You can see right right there that I tack it down at the end, at both ends now. That way it just gets a little bit of a curl, but not too much of a curl because otherwise the whole leaf will flip up and then you see the bottom of it. And I don't know, it's just not quite as cute. So I have those and I forgot all the stitch markers in the other room. Let me go grab those. Okay, I made Christmas stitch markers and they are so stinking cute, y'all. Every time I have to pick them up, I just start smiling. The first one is Jingle Bells. Let's see. Is that not fun? So you get three Jingle Bells on a stitch marker. And then I found these little Christmas lights and you'll get a jingle bell stitch marker and a Christmas light. 
The Christmas lights come in six different colors. You get your pick of which color light bulb you want. And then this is a red candy cane with a bell attached to it. So it just, it adds that little Christmas tinkle sound to your work. I love it. Um, and you get your choice of a gold, green, or silver bell on your candy cane. So those are the fun noise making stitch markers. I I don't think I've ever purchased a stitch marker that had like a bell on it. It made noise and I made, I, I got the supplies last year. So I had made myself one. It was like after the season. So I, I made myself one and I put it on my work and it just makes a slight little jingle bell every time you're working with it. And it, oh, it makes me so happy. So the other one is my silver Christmas lineup. You get your choice of a three pack. This one has a candy cane, some bells, they don't jingle, and a pine cone. I think I called this one Christmas cheer. And, oh. This one was Deck the Halls. Somebody's backwards. Can't do it. So you get a Christmas tree, a stocking, and bells. Yeah, bells with some holly. And this one is Snow Day. This is the last one. Snow Day was popular. So you get mittens, a little snowman, and a snowflake. Very cute. Um, those are all in the shop right now and available. So you can go place your orders and they will ship out roughly same day, next day. <laughs> I, I'm pretty quick at getting orders out the door. So that, yes, okay. That is everything for finished objects. Let's hop into works in progress. My naughty knitting sack has my Halloween socks in it. We are coming up on Thanksgiving and I am still working on Halloween socks. But They're both so close to being done. Um, this one is just a few rows away from a toe. This one is an inch or two from a toe. So we're getting very close. This is Southern Skein's Hocus Pocus. It was her October colorway. And all the little rainbow stripes are my Halloween advent from wonderful wool. Uh, I had lots of leftovers. I still have lots of leftovers because one stripe in a sock uses pretty much nothing. So, oh, I have my spooky pop tart from Silly Sheep Designs and a pumpkin that I made. Those No, no, because the next episode is in like two weeks. These are going to be finished by them. Um, that being said, I cast on another sock. So this is <laughs> a Halloween bag <laughs> from Miss Fiber Fox. I really like it because it's, it's square. It keeps its shape fairly well while being really soft and able to go into like my backpack. Um, I went with a friend and sat in a waiting room for a long time and did not feel like being that weirdo with a cutout of her foot that was trying to get length on a sock and then having to do a toe. 
weird enough that I'm going to go knit in a waiting room. I don't, I don't want to sit there with a cutout off my foot. So I started another sock and I did all of this in one appointment, just waiting. Um, this is Knit Picks Felici and really bright on camera. That's uh, a little bit better, I think, back here. Uh, this is Painted Hills, and it is from their update last this past summer. Um, my mom picked this color. She really liked it, so these will be mom's socks. I have a little sock blocker from Monster Knits. And yeah, this is my magic vanilla sock pattern because I can get a pair of socks out of one Felici. Okay. I'll work on that at some point. It'll probably go to market with me because it's very easy breezy vanilla knitting. Don't have to think too hard. Um, that pattern the Magic Vanilla Socks pattern, it does have measurements of like how long to do your ribbing and your cuff in order to get two socks out of the ones game. And it's a free download. Go download it. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's all my, my works in progress because I've been doing work, work stuff. So let's talk mail real quick. Um, again, nitpicks. I don't know where it is. I ordered it at the beginning of last week and I don't know. I guess part of it's in Texas and the other part is who knows where. But I told y'all I won yarn for posting pictures of my feet on the internet. Oh yeah, it came in. Um, this is, well, not, let's see. This is from Dana Ray Makes. She did a Socktober posting pictures of your socks every day just to encourage you to wear your socks. I don't really need encouragement to wear my socks because I already wear them every day, 365. Um, but it's still a lot of fun to play and tag all the makers, the pattern designers, yarn dyers, all of it. So I did all that and bonus, I had no idea she was giving away prizes. So I won yarn from Rhubarb and Honey. Um, this is a one of a kind chocolate raisins tweed sock and it is an 80-20 superwash merino and wool nibs, nibs. So you can see the little black spots are kind of, that, that, that's the tweed in it. And texture, it, it gives you texture. Um, it has no nylon. And I know you don't have to have nylon in a sock. I like nylon in a sock, so I can't help but wonder if this would make a good mess of burl hat. I, oh, I am a sucker for a good mess of burl hat. By the way, I had a viewer reach out to me because she's trying to knit that hat pattern and she's having a lot of trouble with it. I offered to her and I will offer to anybody that wants help, needs help, uh, is having trouble with anything. I will video chat with you. I will sit there and knit on screen with you step by step and help you through the pattern. Um, so she she's having a little trouble with the cast on and with getting engaged properly and I offered to sit down on video chat whenever is convenient for her and help her with it. So that offer is out there for all of y'all. I just love having fibery friends. So I want to help y'all be more fibery. <laughs> uh, okay. So yarn, maybe a hat. I don't know. I, mm, it's a pretty color. It's kind of a mauve -y purple. 
and it came with a stitch marker chandelier. I had to look this up. I have never heard of a stitch marker chandelier, didn't know what it was. I went to their Etsy shop, which will be linked down below, to see what it is. So this part attaches to your project. And then let's say you're knitting a sweater and it has like arm decreases in it and you know exactly how many decreases you'll have to do. You can go ahead and add the stitch markers to the bottom of this for how many decreases you need to do. And every time you hit one of those decreases, you'll add a marker onto your sweater. When you run out of markers, you've done your decreases. I thought that was a really clever idea. And I wish I would have had this when I was making my last tank top because I put all those pattern repeats um, stitch markers in and that would have been really cool. So I will definitely be hanging on to this and testing it out next time I make a garment. Who am I? Garment knitting? Oh my god. Okay. That is all of the mail, which brings us into chatter. Um, let's start with this market that I keep telling y'all about. So I will be working Small Business Saturday in downtown for a Christmas market. That's big. Like any event in downtown does really well. And it's going to be Small Business Saturday. It's the holidays. Like, this is going to be a good market. Originally, they were, they told us we're going to close this street. Y'all are going to be set up on the street 10 to 5. Yeah, 10 to 5. And I was like, cool. Well, then I get a phone call from the guy organizing it telling me that the location moved. And I was like, oh, okay. We are going to be in the park in the downtown park. They're not closing streets for us anymore. There is this little park in the heart of downtown, very small. It has a few tables and a little stage area with kind of a built-in bench seating that faces the stage. And they hold like pep rallies for the university and things like that there. It, it's the heart of downtown. I, I'm gonna be in the heart of downtown. like prime location. Oh my god. Okay. Reading the email that they sent out to us and it said setup is from 8 to 10. And the show is from 10 to 5. Please do not tear down before 4. It's like that's kind of weird. Usually they ask that you don't tear down until the end of the show which would be 5 o'clock. It then goes on to say that at 5.30, kickoff to Christmas starts in downtown. They are going to be lighting the Christmas tree and the local community theater is going to be doing a few skits and there's gonna be a band playing and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, whoa, okay. So we're, we're, on, we're, we're the pre-show pre to the real activities of the afternoon. They're like, that all starts at 5.30, so if you're leaving, you really need to get packed up and gone between 4 and 5 so that you can leave before it gets too crowded. Like, whoa. And then they go on to say that there's going to be a whole lot of new faces coming out and joining the crowd for all of these activities. If you want to stay set up, you can stay set up until seven. What? You are giving me prime location in downtown on the day of all the activities and you're giving me the option to stay open until 7 p.m. to catch all of the people that it's gonna be too crowded for me to leave? Yes, please. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. 
it is going to be a very long day. So setup is eight to 10. Uh, I'll probably get there like nine cause yeah. Uh, they already have all the spots mapped out. I know exactly where I'm going. I don't take that long to set up. And then I am going to be outside from 10 a.m. till 7 p.m. I am working a nine hour day. I am so excited. Y'all, they, they, they said too crowded to leave. That's people, people that can see my work, people that might buy my work. How do you leave? How on earth as a vendor, do you just pack up and leave early when there's gonna be all those people there? I can't do it. It's gonna be a very long day. Um, see if I can't maybe talk my husband into coming and sitting with me come night shift because it's gonna get busy. I, I feel like it's gonna get busy and yeah. That's why I'm saying I need more reindeer. I need the gingerbread men. I have no idea how many hats I need. I have no idea what to prepare for for a nine hour day in downtown. That's huge. That's massive. Oh my God. The panic has set in. If you haven't noticed, it's here. It is, it is, it, it is here. I am panicked. And this is show one. I have three shows in three weeks. I have one small business Saturday, the following Saturday, and then the following Friday. And all I can say is I'm glad that they're in that order. The biggest show is first. I can make, 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 make. And then the middle show does fairly well. That last show never does very well, but I really enjoy going to it. It's a fun one. Um, so I'll have the least amount of stuff come that show, but I am good. Oh my God. I am so excited for, for small business Saturday. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the fact that I've been sitting here making all this stuff and I sit on my sofa and I just become an assembly line. I make all the little bits, all the little pieces, and then I assemble all the things together. And that's how you end up with 10 peaches and some of them don't have tops yet because assembly line. I'm sitting in front of the TV. I'm watching TV. I am binging TV, making all this stuff because it's not complicated. I already have all the patterns designed slash picked up from other designers. Um, and I just have to count. It's just counting and I can count and watch TV. I just can't talk and count. That doesn't work. I can listen and count all day long. Um, I finally sat down to watch the Good Witch movies. I told y'all that they were on Amazon Prime, they were free, da 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 da. Pull them up, they're not free anymore. Apparently they were only free for October. So I look up where I can go watch them. You can rent them for $2.99 a piece, I think on Amazon, or Hallmark has them for free on their platform. Of course, their platform is $5.99 a month. They have a seven day free trial. I signed up for the seven day free trial and I binged all seven of the Good Witch movies in two days. And they were really good, by the way. I liked them. I am planning on buying the DVDs of them so that I don't have this problem again next year. Uh, I'm eventually going to buy the DVDs of the seasons, like the TV series as well. That way, if it ever goes off Netflix, I won't have a heart attack. Um, but yeah, so watched it all in two days. It was great. My husband's like, oh, good. I'm glad that you were able to do that. So now you can cancel Hallmark before they charge you and da 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 da. And I was like, um, no. They made me go through all of this and get a seven day free trial. I am using and abusing the seven day free trial. <laughs> so I kind of dug through and they have all these categories of like Christmas, obviously, and uh, mystery. And then I think there was one called romance and I'm like, 
isn't everything on Hallmark Romance, but okay. Um, I went under the mystery category, and if you are into cozy murder mysteries, I have one for you. Um, that is a term that I actually learned from watching knitters, uh, other knitting podcasts. They love a good cozy murder mystery. So, you know, small town girl finds dead body, uh, tries to solve the case herself, maybe possibly working with the police, maybe not. She gets in the middle of everything and kidnapped or something along those lines. Cozy murder mystery. Um, it is called Aurora Tea Garden. Um, I thought it was Aurora Tea period garden. No, it's Aurora Tea Garden as in a place in which you would grow tea plants. Like tea garden. Um, the actress is Cameron something something DJ Tanner from Full House. That, that's where you're going to know her from. She's the main character. She is a librarian and she is also a member of the Real Murders Club where they s research and debate murder cases, like famous murder cases where the weapon's missing or it's a cold case, they never found the killer, things like that. They, this group of people get together and discuss murder cases. So of course then a murder happens and they all get together and start trying to figure out who did it and it's great. It is absolutely wonderful. Totally cozy murder mystery if that is your jam. There were, were nine video, nine movies, nine movies I think of that series and I binged all of them in three days. Y'all. I watched so much murder mystery, it was unreal. So I went from like Good Witch, which is just happy, magical, fun times, to librarian, murder mystery, and then I found something called The Gourmet Detective, which is a chef who solves murder mysteries. I don't, I don't know. Um, by the time I made it to him, they were good. But I think I was a little burned out because I was just kind of like, oh look, dead body. Who knew? <laughs> so I think I was a little tired by that point. I canceled my, I, I did my seven days, canceled my Hallmark, and I think I'm gonna wait on the whole murdering thing again. I'm all murdered out, I can't take any more. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much everything that is going on in my life right now. Everything is just work, 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 work. Um, holidays, lava cake went over really well last week for my mother-in-law's birthday. Uh, coming up next is Aunt Pam's birthday and she requested a hummingbird cake. I've never eaten one, I've never made one. Uh, found a Southern Living recipe, did a test run last night, and oh my god, it is so good. Oh, it's good. It, it's like banana nut bread, but better, because it also has pineapple in it and cream cheese icing. Like, oh my god, it's so good. So, did a trial run, sent it to my neighbors. Like, I was like, we gotta get this cake out of the house. <laughs> I took it to neighbors, and I I will be making another one for Pam, and then I will be making a cupcake version of it to take to my family Thanksgiving, because it was really good. Um, yeah, birthdays, work, holidays, it's that time of the year. <laughs> uh, with that, I hope y'all are taking care of yourselves doing your hand exercises, whatever it is that you have to do to stay healthy. And it was absolutely wonderful talking to y'all. I'm so glad to be back and feeling like myself again. So I will not see y'all next week. I will be back the following week. And happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy time with whoever it is that you choose to have 
Thanksgiving with. Bye! Okay, next up I have knitting machine, machine, knit, hats. Ah! The mailman. <laughs>